when a thought comes into your mind, you don't have to absorb it all over it and examine it from every single angle, something that I have a tendency to want to do. She said, it can be like a bird on a power line. The thought can come, it can sit for a second and you can acknowledge it and you can look at it and think about it and then it can go away. Welcome back to my channel. Today is day 10 of Vlogmas and today is just going to be a conversation between me and you. I wanted to discuss and give a little bit of an update on my anxiety and the videos that I had posted a couple months back where I was talking about how I had sought a therapist to help me through my symptoms of anxiety. I know that those videos really resonated with a lot of people and it opened up some good dialogue and conversation around mental health, something that I think is still so stigmatized and that people are often wary of talking about, especially on such a public platform. But I wanted to explain sort of where I started and where I am now, now that I've been in therapy for about five months. The first thing that I want to say is that if you feel that you yourself are suffering from symptoms of anxiety or symptoms of depression, then seek help if you are capable of doing so. I knew that I needed to seek help because I started feeling overwhelming senses of anxiety and I would talk about them with Kyle or I'd talk about them with my dad or with my cousin Brittany, people who are really close to me that I know love me and care for me. But those people aren't equipped, they don't have degrees, they don't have the tools and the knowledge to help me through those things. So I didn't want to pawn off all of my feelings of anxiety on them and I didn't want our entire relationship to be about me talking to them about my anxiety. So me seeking out a therapist was so, so helpful because she's there to listen to me. I'm someone who is an external thinker. I'm someone who wants to explain how I'm feeling and work through those thoughts and feelings by having dialogue with other people. So having a therapist, having someone who I know is there to listen to me and to give me good feedback and give me advice, that has been so essential for my growth and my understanding of my triggers of my anxiety and also how I can manage and maintain those things. A lot of people will ask, how did you go about seeking the proper therapist for you? And I have to say that I've been very blessed and fortunate that I have health insurance that covers mental health. So I was able to seek out a therapist that was within my network and I had many options available to me. I was able to go to different people's websites and read about what types of therapy they were interested in, whether they were cognitive behavioral therapists, something that I was seeking called a CBT therapist, or if they dealt with people particularly for anxiety and for symptoms of depression. If you do have insurance, I would check out what your insurance provides for you and whether or not that copay is something that would be within your budget. I think some people have this idea that a therapist is there to fix you and that's not the case, at least it's not the case for me. So I went into therapy seeking someone who I knew had the tools and was equipped with the knowledge that could help me and give me advice. So when I was seeking a therapist, I ended up going to this particular therapist website, reading all about her experience and something that really stood out to me was that she actually talks a lot about Myers-Briggs with her patients and right then that's something that I knew that I wanted, someone who would understand me as an ESTJ, me my personality type. Um, so that for me was like a big like aha moment that that's how I ended up seeking out this therapist. I know that not everyone has that experience, some people have to cycle through different people and different therapists to find someone that works with them. I was just very fortunate that I found someone right away, but that's probably because I had done a lot of research before I even called this particular therapist. So some of the things that my therapist has helped me identify are not only what triggers my anxiety, but also what I can do to manage that anxiety. It's not to say that that anxiety is going to go away or that I can just cure it and forget about it or push it down and away from me and just focus on the good things. Instead, my therapist has taught me a lot of tools and skills so that I can live my life alongside that anxiety. My therapist has never told me that anything is wrong with me or that my personality sucks. You know, there are things that I struggle with and there are things that I need to work on and grow in, but she's always been very encouraging encouraging that you need to accept yourself and the qualities that you have and then you need to learn how to manage those things. Let me stop doing a bunch of hand waving and give you a concrete example. 
I am a type A personality. I think I've explained this many times before. I like everything organized and controlled and planned and I don't like spontaneity. I don't like randomness. So one of the biggest things that triggers my anxiety is spontaneity and randomness or when plans change or when situations change that I cannot control. I think I've gone through a lot of changes and a lot of growing pains over this past year because of teaching full time, not being in school any longer, not having that safety net of doing work and writing essays and being, you know, as a grad student. Because I graduated from grad school and I'm no longer doing something that I've done since I was four and a half years old, you know, being in school, though I guess I'm technically still in school because I teach, it's very, very different for me to be in this environment where I, I'm doing this on my own, I'm, I'm adulting for lack of a better word. This is a new period of growth for me. This is a new time for me to experience um, all that life has to offer me. And that's been very, very scary for me. And she said, you know, it's okay for you to be afraid. It's okay for you to be afraid of adulting. It's been nice to be validated in that sense that there's nothing wrong with me for feeling fear about my future. So to go along with that, one of the biggest things that produces anxiety for me is fear of the unknown. When I can't control a situation or when something happens that I can't see into the future and I don't know the next steps to take, that makes me feel debilitated. Instead of preparing for that, instead of saying, okay, well, if this happens in the future, these are the steps I'll take or you know, these are the solutions that I'll find if we cross that bridge, Instead, I can't really think into the future and I just get debilitated and I clam up and I end up having anxiety attacks about things. They could be anything from the smallest, my student not coming to take an in-class essay and then showing up at my office three weeks later and saying, can I make this up? And me being like, what? Like, that's bizarre. Why would you ever think that would be okay, right? This person is violating the rules. I like rules and order. And that throws me into a full-blown anxiety attack. Or it could be something as big as me planning a wedding with my fiance and not knowing exactly what's going to happen in four months from now when we finally make decisions on a florist. This has been something that I recognize is problematic. I can't control the world around me. The world is random and I especially cannot control the actions of other people, but it is what it is. This is something that I struggle with and now I need to learn the tools so that I can manage those things. The final trigger that I have about anxiety is not just me being unable to control my own environment, but me not being able to control other people. And I know that sounds probably really bad, um, but this is something that I've had to come to terms with. I like being in control, not only of myself and my own actions. Those things have been beneficial for me. They've gotten me to where I am today. I have been on a tightrope and I've been organized and orderly all of my life and I've found success because of those things. But I have had to admit to myself that I really like controlling other people too. I like it when other people are sort of underneath my bubble of control. I, I don't want anyone to be in my bubble. I don't want anyone to control my day or the things that I wanna do, but I want to control everyone else's bubble. And that has manifested itself in a couple of really detrimental ways. The first way is that it causes me to be crude and callous towards people when they don't do the things that I want them to do. Whether it's Kyle when he decides that he's not going to clean the kitchen after he said he was going to, or if it's someone on social media who reacts poorly to something that I post even if I didn't intend it to be that way. It all stems from this fear of judgment, I think. One of the first things that my therapist asked me was, do you fear or do you worry about what other people think about you? And I said, absolutely. People can say all day that they don't care what anyone thinks about them and, and that's fine, but I do. I, and I've had to admit that to myself. And so I think that's what causes me to want to control other people because if I can control their reactions, then they won't judge me. <laughs> and I, I don't know if that makes sense and I'm, I'm hoping that I'm not coming across as, um, I don't know, ridiculous or outrageous, but I've had to admit those things to myself. And um, so to go back to the way that it manifests itself, 
First, it, you know, it causes me to be rude and callous. The second way is that it makes me feel unnecessarily and outrageously disrespected by people if I can't control them. Let me try to break this down. I like to make decisions. If someone else makes a decision that I either disagree with or wouldn't do myself, once they do that thing, I feel disrespected by them because I feel like my decision or my choice is the best one because I've considered it and I have been pragmatic about it and I have rifled through all of the possible solutions and found the best one. So I want everyone else to think that that's the best decision as well. So if they don't do that thing, if they don't make that decision, then I feel disrespected. And that is so silly to feel disrespected if someone makes a choice that I wouldn't make, but that's the truth, that's my truth. So that's something that I wouldn't have known had I not gone to therapy and had I not talked through my feelings, but it's something that my therapist has helped me realize. And because I've been able to accept those things and contextualize those things, contextualize my fear, contextualize my need for control and the ways that it manifests itself, now I can talk through to some solutions. So one of the first solutions that I found to dealing with my anxiety, whether it's because I can't control my environment or because I can't control other people, is to interrupt that anxiety with gratitude. Gratitude is something that we kind of throw around a lot. We make lists where we talk about how thankful we are for things. And, you know, I look in the mirror and I am so, so grateful for the many blessings and privileges I've had in my life. But when you interrupt anxiety with gratitude, that actually is an action. It's not just a thought. It's actually something that you are acting on. I choose to interrupt this anxiety with the gratitude that I have. I choose to look at a situation that is random and spontaneous and say, well, this is not exactly what I would have done, but I'm grateful that I am still in this situation where I can have this opportunity to do this thing. I say, maybe that's not how I would have gone about it. Maybe that's not what I intended, but I'm grateful that I have this opportunity to have this platform in the first place or to have this relationship or this um, partnership with this person in the first place. And it sh I can choose then to accept someone else's truth. So that's the second biggest thing that I've learned that I can have a truth and someone else can have a truth and they are both valid. Putting that into action where my truth is just not your truth and they can both exist simultaneous and be valid for both of us. We've seen this a lot with the election. We've seen this a lot with social issues that I talk about like feminism, like misogyny, like racism. My truth is one thing, someone else's truth is one thing and I don't agree with them, but that's their truth. They feel so strongly about that and I feel so strongly about this and I've just got to let them be who they are. If I want people to let me be who I am, then I have to be just as willing and I have to be just as accepting of other people's truths. The next thing that my therapist has sort of worked through with me is something I've discussed on the channel before, but it's when a thought comes into my mind, I generally want to process that thing. I want to break it apart. I want to categorize it. I want to think and mull over it. And then I want to envelop it within myself because that's knowledge that I am gleaning from some situation. Because I'm an ESTJ, that S stands for sensing, which means that I like to have a toolbox of items and experiences that I've been through that I can draw from at a later, uh, at a later time with a later problem and use that tool to apply it to that problem at that time. So that's why when thoughts come into my brain, I want to envelop them and I want to absorb them. But something that my therapist has sort of explained to me is, Alyssa, when a thought comes into your mind, you don't have to absorb it all over it and examine it from every single angle, something that I have a tendency to want to do. She said, it can be like a bird on a power line. The thought can come, it can sit for a second and you can acknowledge it and you can look at it and think about it and then it can go away. To give you a, a proper example, if someone says something that you know hurts my feelings or if someone has a thought or opinion that I disagree with, I don't have to think all day about why they would say something like that or what would possess them to have that idea and then perpetuate anxiety for myself, thinking about that and pining over it. Instead, I can look at it, acknowledge it and say, that's a bird, that's a thought, okay, and then let it go. 
So then I'm not sitting there all day trying to think about exactly the reasons why someone might do something like that. I am so analytical already about myself and about the things that I'm doing. I don't need to do that for other people. It's a waste of time. It's unnecessary. Someone can say something and you can just let it go. And that is something that has been a really, really important thing for me to recognize over the course of my therapy. The last thing that my therapist has sort of helped me work through is that I am a very all or nothing type of person. That I'm either all in or I'm all out. Because I am so pragmatic, if I'm going to make a decision to do something, I'm going to go for it. And it doesn't make sense for me to have one foot in the door and one foot out of the door. Some people like that. They don't like to put all of their eggs in one basket. They like to have other options. But that is not even a feasible solution for me because it doesn't seem pragmatic. It's not organized to worry about if you're in or if you're out. And so I usually just go all in. If I make a decision to do something, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna follow through with it. When someone doesn't follow through with something they say they're gonna do, that drives me up the wall because the expectations that I have for myself are that if I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna follow through. And again, that leads us to me having the same expectations for other people that I have for myself, which is just another thing entirely. But let me give you an example. So recently Kyle and I were talking with our parents or my parents in particular about wedding planning and they were talking about all the things that they wanted to do and obviously they're paying for our wedding so they get to make most of these decisions and um, because I wasn't in control I just said you know what whatever you guys do whatever you want I don't care and it caused kind of a rift for a second and my dad and my mom said Alyssa you know this is a negotiation we have to cooperate we have to compromise and I don't know how to compromise I either want to be in control or I don't want to have anything to do with it at all so if people are going to tell me what I'm going to do then I'd say nope I just relinquish my responsibility I relinquish my seat at the negotiating table you do what you want to do so that's something that I've been working through so that I can quell my own anxiety and I think all of the things that I've mentioned throughout this video are um, things that I need to work on so that I don't perpetuate my own anxiety. So it comes back to me being able to maintain saying, okay, I'm going to struggle with anxiety because of my personality, because of who I am. I can accept those things. I don't have to necessarily change those things, but I need to take other people's needs into account as well, rather than just my own. It's teaching me a lot about being less selfish and I mean, partly I think we become less selfish as we grow, as we gain wisdom, and as we, you know, have long-standing partnerships with people we love, that you recognize that it can't just be all about you. I think a lot of my life has been all about me because I've been focused on me and, you know, getting through school and getting into a career that I loved and doing the things that I want to do, and that's great. But now that I'm going to be a wife and now that I'm having much stronger relationships with my parents, you know, adult to adult relationships, and now that I'm looking for long-standing friendships, I'm becoming an adult. And so I need to start taking other people's needs into account as well. So I hope this video was interesting or informative for some of you. Thank you for listening to me kind of talk about myself. <laughs> Wonder if these things resonate with you guys or if, you know, any of this really stood out to you or was helpful to you at all. But again, I am not a therapist, obviously. That's why I sought out a therapist. So if you are struggling with symptoms of anxiety or depression, please do seek therapy. Uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of in seeking out someone to help you work through some of the issues that you're having or some of the thoughts that you're having. I'll see you guys back for Vlogmas Day 11. Thank you guys.